All right, guys. So we're going to be talking about the Hinter Kaifek murders today on the Paranormal Mind podcast. Check it out. What's up, everybody? Welcome. What's up, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> you do that shit every single time. Listen, man, man I got to get us on the right <laughs> track, right? We got to have some energy behind this. I guess so. I guess so. But welcome to the Paranormal Mind podcast. We really appreciate y'all checking the podcast out. Uh, hope y'all have had a good week so far. And um, how's everything going, man? Man, it's going great. I am getting a little anxiety about the amount of work we have to do coming up, all the traveling, and it's a lot. Yeah, it's so, a lot. so we're actually traveling to Oregon next week, Yep, and we're going to be doing some filming and stuff, and yeah, we've got a busy <laughs> few weeks, so we'll be in Oregon next week, and yep. then I'm going to be at the Michigan Paracon the following week, yeah. and then the week after that, we're going to be in Louisiana. Yep for an a, an event so yeah it's going to be busy but we're going to be at the gothic jail doing a two-day two-day yep, september 1st and 2nd so it's going to be a lot of fun but it's just going to be busy and then october i'll be in scarefest the, scarefest the uk the uh, you'll be in the uk um, i will be doing a local event the day that you're at scarefest so yeah yeah that's um, true so it's gotta, crazy. It's going to be busy. Yeah. I got a trip to South Dakota to make at some point for an event, I think in like September. Where's that? Is that Deadwood? Uh, Deadwood. Yeah. And um, yeah. me and you both are taking our Patreon trip winner over to West Virginia at the beginning of October. Oh, yeah. So that's going to be the old, what is it? Cap, like? The hospital, on, old hospital on College Hill. That's what they call it. We've never been. So that no, was, that's it was the on first our time. It was on our patron patrons bucket list, so made it happen. Very cool. Yeah, so we're gonna be busy, but it's a good type of busy. Oh yeah, so absolutely. it's good to be busy. Absolutely. Like that. So anyway, we're gonna be talking about the Hinter Kaifek murders. Have you ever heard Hinter of that? Hinter Kaifek. Never heard of it. So this right. will be great. All right. Well, let's dive into it. So this is it's really a wild story. Don't be saying any weird words for me today. I'm I've already said Hinter Kaifek and I, <laughs> Is it going to get worse I, than it's that? It's going to get worse. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to be like mispronouncing it. a lot right. of words, I'm sure. Oh boy, right. here we go. Don't worry, I have the sound effects ready. <laughs> All right. So, this is a gnarly story from way back in 1922. So, picture this. It's a remote Bavarian farmstead 70 kilometers north of Munich, Germany. I have no idea what 70 kilometers is, but I, okay. I, I don't either. Let's just say it's close. Maybe. Or, maybe. or is it? I don't know. You guys can figure <laughs> that out for us. So six people, we're talking a whole family from a two-year-old kid to a 72-year-old grandmother brutally murdered. Oh, my gosh. And get this, by an unknown assailant. So they had no clue who did this. And six months before this craziness happened, they had this maid who quit because she claimed she heard weird noises in the attic. Uh-oh. So, uh, thought the place was haunted. That They thought the, pl the place was haunted. So Haunted by a person. <laughs> I guess. I guess. So, ghosts or not, someone was definitely messing with them. The father finds this random newspaper from Munich. He didn't buy it. No one nearby subscribed to it then he sees footprints from the forest leading to their property but none going back he hears footsteps in the attic checks it out and finds nothing i mean really freaky stuff finds nothing at all so he sees footprints he sees footprints from the forest but none leading back so it's like leading mm. up, leading up to <laughs> to the house, but none going. Somebody back. hanging out in the attic is what it sounds well, like. Well, he heard the footsteps. Like I said, he went up to check it out, and nobody was there. Hmm. Really weird. Or maybe he just didn't find them. 
maybe they're really good hiders. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, but e- either way, it's just, it's weird, you know? Yeah. So, for sure. so March 31st comes around, they hire a new maid, Maria. That evening, someone or something lures most of the family into the barn and takes them out one by one with a mattock. Now, that's like an old school axe for. Oh, my God. I knew you were wondering. Yeah, I was like, what's a mattock? Yeah. It's like an old school axe. So the killer then goes inside the house and finishes off the rest. So it just takes them out one by one. The freakiest part the killer didn't just hit and run. Huh. No, they stayed at the farm, fed the animals. What? Had some bread and meat and just chilled there with the bodies for days. Oh, my gosh. The the craziest thing. So four days later, people start realizing something's off when they don't show up for right. Sunday people service. Yeah, people aren't seeing them out in the community. and Yeah, so they check the place and discover the massacre. Oh, my God. So the investigation, we'll go into that a little bit. It was total chaos, all right? So many people had been in and out of that crime scene, moving stuff, eating in the kitchen even. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it was a mess like they didn't really care they just walked in there and and yeah it's, and act, did their it's thing. an active uh crime scene let me have a little dinner yeah um <laughs> <laughs> so let's so, eat a sandwich so they, for my break so they find a bunch of money um so robberies ruled out so there, there was a bunch of money in the house so nobody s- so stole they anything they didn't take anything nope Uh, Despite tons of leads, theories, and investigations that stretch for decades, they never nailed down who did it. Whoever this was just woke up and chose violence. Yeah, apparently. So suspects came and went. Crazy theories floated around. The case officially closed in 1955, but they had interrogations as late as 1986. What? Yeah. Yeah. So this isn't just another unsolved crime. There were so many weird happenings around it. People seeing mysterious figures near the farm after the murders. A stranger, excuse me, a stranger confessing, (laughs) then bolting into the woods. A stranger confessing. And and then running running into the woods. Yep. Uh, And an oven that smelled like something real bad was burned in it. Oh, no. It gives me chills even thinking about that. So if that doesn't make you lock your doors at night, I don't know what will. So let's dive into it a little bit about the suspects, okay? So there were su- some suspects, of course, with any crime right. you have people that you suspect. So let's start with Carl Gabriel. It's always the quiet one in the community. Yeah. Is he the quiet one? I don't know. We're about to get to that. Uh-uh. He was supposedly killed in World War II. <laughs> what? But whispers started going around that maybe he didn't die. Meanwhile, his wife, Victoria, has a kid, Joseph. Okay. And the rumors, they suggest either her missing in action husband or even her own father could be the dad. Ugh. It's just crazy. All right. And then enter Lorenz. All right. Here we go with the words. Crap. (laughs) Crap. So I'm going to screw this up. I'm definitely going to screw this up. <laughs> so, what are you saying? <laughs> so <laughs> enter, enter Lorenz Schlittenbauer. 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 You say that five times fast. Schlittenbauer, Schlittenbauer, Schlittenbauer. I can do it three times. Oh, good Lord. Uh, the guy, well, you probably can say that because you had some good rest. <laughs> That's dummy. true. That, so, <laughs> it's the dumb one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the guy suddenly has a key to the crime scene. Out of nowhere, he had a key. He just nonchalantly walks into the house alone. Later on, he talk, he's talking, sus, uh, excuse me. Later on, he's talking specifics about the murder scene conditions. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? So the dude just had a key. He just, just had a key in. out of nowhere and then walks in and walks in alone and kind of checks the place out. Hmm. Uh, really weird. Now let's talk about the Gump brothers. <laughs> <laughs> the Gump brothers? Yeah. <laughs> Their sister on her deathbed, no less, implicates them. And that's heavy stuff. 
and the Bitchler brothers. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the Bitchler brothers. We're like little we're not, kids. We're not cussing. We're like little kids. We're not cussing, but we're like little kids. We laugh at the stupidest things. <laughs> I got emphysema on that one. The Bitchler brothers. All right. So the Bitchler brothers, their farm dog, known to bark at everyone, seems fine with them. Raises an eyebrow, right? So the farm dog that was on the property, that was the family oh, yeah, dog. yeah, makes it like was, he was comfortable with them. He was comfortable with with uh, the brothers, the Bitchler brothers. <laughs> and, ju- <laughs> and just to throw a curveball, there's Paul Mueller. This guy was apparently on a murder spree in the U.S. And then a similar crime pops up in Germany. Is there a connection? It's one of those mysteries that just keeps you guessing. So hmm. it, he could have been uh, involved. We don't know for sure. And they never really solved it. Gotcha. Hmm. So let's talk about the legacy of Hinter Kaifek, Okay. This place has been the topic of a ton of books and articles like the ones by Joseph Ludwig Ecker, <laughs> which got people buzzing again about the case. There was this documentary back in 1981 called Hinter Kaifek. Symbol de Uh-oh. Unheimlichen. It's okay, I man. Butcher hey, this is done. This is done. This <laughs> <laughs> is for, go, going downhill. For, for all the for for anyone uh, um I'm so sorry. Anybody <laughs> listening, I'm so sorry. So symbol de Unheimlich. It's <laughs> horrible. I'm not going to try that again. Holy crap. It was based on uh, Leshner's work. It was regularly shown in Ingolstadt. All of these things mean nothing to me because yeah. I don't know what well, any of it is. Well, this is the legacy of Hinter Kaifek, okay? <laughs> it's such a All legacy. Right? Yeah, it's a legacy. All right. So fast forward 10 years, there's a, there's a play and another doc about the murders, plus a radio doc and a newspaper series that dug into the story. In 2007, those, uh, these police academy students took another crack at the case using modern techniques. Okay, 2007. Yep. They were pretty impressed with the original investigation, but man, they were bummed about the missing forensics, like fingerprints, for yeah. instance. They all zeroed in on a main suspect, but out of respect for his family, kept it hush. Oh, okay. Which is wild if you know if you're wanting to solve hmm. any type of murder or anything like that, you would think you would still come forward. I and- mean, it, I guess it depends if they were like, if they're just doing this as maybe a hobby because they're interested in maybe trying to figure out who it is. Maybe because they don't 100% know, they don't want to go out and just put somebody on blast, maybe? Yeah, or n- possibly. I don't know. It's weird. So then in 2017, the book, The Man from the Train, took a swing at it. The authors speculated about this guy, Paul Mueller, who might have been behind similar murders in the U.S. We talked about him just a few minutes ago. Gotcha. They think there's a chance he might have been involved in the Hinter Kaifek case. Okay. Was it him? Well, it's kind of up in the air, but they're not ruling it out. So that's the Hinter Kaifek murders. And we've only been recording, what, 10, 15 minutes maybe? Yeah, we're at like 14 minutes. Yeah. So I thought it was weird whenever I was researching it because people, even after the fact and even before, they were saying that the family beforehand were saying that there were strange things going on. There were strange footsteps in the attic. Never could find anybody, right? Yeah, I mean, that leads you to believe that for sure there was some somebody messing with them. You know what I mean? Well, maybe. But even after the fact, um, people had, saw, had seen like strange figures in the woods. Um, yeah. Strange happenings going around on the property. Even after all of this had transpired, you would think that if, if the, the murderer was not just hanging out in the woods after the fact. That's true. Yeah. I mean, that's true. Or at least I guess you can't really put anything off the table though with somebody that would do something like that and then hang out and like have a meal and feed the animals around. I mean, yeah, it's just, who knows? It's just weird. And it's sad. Like there's again, doing a deep dive into a lot of 
cases and stuff. Right. There's so many out there where they're unsolved. Right. And we were actually doing like a true uh, yeah. crime uh, documentary about all this. Yep. Yeah. Um, about small town crimes, but it, it's crazy how many cr crimes are out there that they go right uh, unsolved. And we were also looking into um, the indigenous, like indigenous yeah. women and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's that's it's, a problem. It's such it's such a problem right now where there's so many out there that are discarded. Yeah. And then they're ignored. Like there's. There, yeah, there's a lot going you, on with that. You know, that's kind of why we wanted to do the small town stuff too, as far as, you know, murdered cases that go unsolved because they can tend to get shoveled off in small communities as well. So, yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I would like to pick up where we left off with the true crime stuff. Maybe if we can do some sort of documentary ourselves in the future yeah, to kind of highlight that stuff because we had something that, had some wings, but with all the network upheaval stuff, it kind of a lot of good projects went are getting away. lost in the shuffle because of it. Yeah, it went away. But there's, I would really like to focus on the indigenous women. Oh, and, me too. And the things that are going on there. But whenever I was reading this Henry Kaifek murder case, that was one of the things that kind of popped up. It's like uh, there's yeah. always some sort of um, unsolved portion of everything and and then people you know they kind of they say that they focus on it and then they say that they have leads and a lead they right. have a main suspect but right out of respect for the family they just decided to drop it are you kidding me i mean what yeah. that doesn't even make sense to me it's weird to me too man like in the paranormal world how many like axe murder cases there are that go unsolved like this like <laughs> it's really strange right i mean mass homicides in in almost <laughs> what homicide Hom homicides homicide right homicide homicide Hom homicides what the <laughs> heck I'm, I'm from southern okay what do you want from me man Hom I'm, I'm homicide. Southern. hold up a minute i'm southern too and i i say homicide 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 what the heck you need tomatoes more sleep. tomatoes okay um <laughs> I don't even know where I was where I was going with that. Now you said um, in, in the paranormal world, there's a lot there's of the a lot homicides of and stuff like that. Yeah, specifically around like axe murders of like whole families and and such. So yeah, um, it's kind of strange how they go unsolved, right? I mean, you would think those would for sure leave evidence behind as to who did it. I mean, it's got to be a gory scene. Yeah, yeah. So what I was talking about with this case, with the strange footsteps, with the yeah. with the figures in the woods, do you have any explanation of? Would you even bring the paranormal into this at all? Would you, Would you say that it could have played a factor into uh, this family's demise? Like, could I mean, it have played a factor at all? My gut says no. My gut says that it was definitely somebody however i think the paranormal activity comes in after this right this is the catalyst but remember the family were saying that they were experiencing paranormal stuff beforehand i don't i mean you can't ever really leave anything off the table my opinion is that it was somebody very like either very close to the family or knew their way around the family's home and was at least up to snuff on like what the schedule of the family was. Right. So if, and it, and, and because of that, the family just kind of overlooked the fact that maybe it could have been them causing all of this stuff. You see what I'm saying? Well, and you got to think too, this happened what in 1920s. Right. So, you know, the, the methods they probably use to try to solve crimes. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I'm thinking from like, let's take the footsteps in the attic, for instance, say the family member comes down and it's like, man, I've been hearing things in the attic. Well, the person doing it, if they're close enough to them could have been in that conversation and they were like, Oh, it wasn't me. And so then they end up not having an answer to it. Well, I mean, 
I know there was one instance with this case where the father heard the footsteps and went to check out, check it out right away mm. and didn't find any, anybody there. I guess it also, if, how often was that happening? Because if it became very frequent, then whoever was doing it was probably pretty quick on their feet and knew to how to get in and out pretty easily. And, and that's scary. That's scary. I know whenever, um, I mean, that's scarier than any paranormal activity for sure. I know whenever I was filming uh, for the Netflix series, um, there was another story that was closely tied into the story that we... Yeah, yeah, you were telling me about that. It was was a serial killer, but he would... uh, I think he was called the Spider-Man killer or something. What he would do is he would hang out in attics. He lived in this attic. Oh, my gosh. And he like camped out there for a long time and he committed these murders and he committed the murders and stayed in the same house where where he committed. Didn't you say that he like spent some time at this place or they speculate that he did? Yeah. 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 So here's the thing though. He was in that attic undetected for years. I mean, it happens, man. That blows my mind that you can commit a murder in the house and then say, screw it. I'm going to stay here. Stayed in the attic. I mean, he was living in the attic before he committed uh, the murders. Gives me chill so bumps, so man. this family, this family was going through their daily motions with this person camping out in their attic. Yeah, like meanwhile, didn't even that know person like knows that like their days are numbered, right? Like, yeah. Didn't even <laughs> know about it, right? Then he commits the murders and then proceeds to stay there after the murders. And the police, the detectives, everything did not find him for a long time after that. Man, there are like that's some, so weird. There's to some me. TikTok videos out there where people have found like little like hole holes in the wall and stuff in their ho- own homes. Yeah, and yeah. see, and once they find them, there's like you know remnants of where people have been like sleeping there. Well, you know, there and was that's a, terrifying. Th- there was another story too. I don't know if you saw it was. Um, reported it was on the news where this guy goes on on nancy gray or nancy drew yeah 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 and yeah, all this yeah. stuff and he's like man i'm my 12 year old or my kid's missing and we've looked everywhere for him we don't know where he is it's it's crazy and while he was live on the air um they get a report where his kid is in uh, like in a oh my se- god cubby in in the basement and he's acting like he could win the Oscars for his performance. Right. But he's freaking out. He's like, what? We checked the basement um, <laughs> mul- multiple <laughs> oh times. Gosh. So what ended up happening is it was all a ploy from him, yeah, to from get, the family. To get attention. To get attention. And the, and the kid was like, he was he went without food and all this stuff. Some weird things What happened. is wrong with but, people, man? But the, the detectives and the police officers went and searched the entire house and could not find that little cubby hole. So that makes you wonder how many, um, so <laughs> go check all the weird che- spots in your house, go check your house because you never know. It's going it, to, you could have a <laughs> secret room have somewhere. Something. Uh, but it's so, it's, it's strange to me that things can be hiding in plain sight. Like you, things could be right under your nose and you don't even know. Like there, the the murderer the murderer here for the Hunter Kaifek murder yeah like you don't know they could he could have been in there could have been know? camping out in the woods for a long watching time watching them I mean that would be that would explain how you'd be able to get in and out because he's been watching them for well, so long right which is just unnerving man right and what if this person was camping out and got close with the family it, maybe it was um, the guy with the key that had a yeah. key to the house. Maybe he got in good, built a relationship, and then whenever you know he snapped, he snapped, and then and that's then the he thing. Took I the mean, whole family. Out. He could have just, you know, what if he just snuck in and grabbed a key at some point, and they just assumed that that key went missing, and he goes and, or maybe he takes it and puts it back even, and goes and makes a copy of it. But I mean, you know, one thing that I don't understand about this whole story is they found footprints from the forest but not leading back to the forest 
So to that, me, though, man, like that, that's foot, weird to me. Foot sprint, foot, foot, foot sprint, <laughs> foot sprints, foot sprints. <laughs> Good God. God. Dang it. And you're drinking water. Or yeah, is I know. that vodka? <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, footprints. I don't know, man. Like, I don't feel like they could be very definitive either. And, I mean, unless it was like very like defined footprints. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, if they could see them walking from the woods to the house. My, my only issue is this. Where did that person come from? From the woods. Like, where did that person come from to lead up to the house to go? Like, did he have a hideout there? Did he just wait? I mean, I guess I just look at it from the perspective of like, if somebody did that in my house, right? Like, finding and tracking footprints in your yard would be kind of like, I don't know that you could do it. What do you mean? Footprints to your house and from your house. Like, would you be able to like specifically find a set in your yard? And you think, well, I mean, I don't know if you're looking for it, maybe like, you know, we, we go through our daily motions yeah. and stuff. We, we don't really pay attention. I guess if they were paranoid enough, but well, that I could, mean, that or could if, also, or also if have other effects. Or if you're doing any sort of investigation, of course, you're going to look at the ground. You're going to see if yeah. you can find any any weapon that was used yeah. or anything like that. Um, so I guess if I was looking for it, sure. Okay. Like I would probably look and see footprints and maybe try to match up, um, you know, the, the prints at the bottom yeah. to see if it matches up. I mean, I really don't know, but I, I just find it weird. If you have a set coming from the woods, but none leading back, where did that person come from, from the woods? Like it, it's, strange i just think that they didn't find the footprints going back to the woods that's my thing i mean people miss on things i mean you just said it yourself you know even cops will search whole premises and not find the things that they're looking for so yeah it can it could be hiding in in plain sight yeah but what about the strange figures after the fact you know yeah and and if there were strange figures in the woods and if this is a person if this was somebody that maybe was living in the woods or hanging out or camping out there um why yeah i mean it's true it's it's weird and then i'm curious and i didn't research this enough but i'm curious if there were more uh murders in the area after the fact or before the fact yeah, that is something that's kind of true about about that scenario. Like, if they never found out who it was, you would think this wouldn't be like a one-off situation. Like, mm-hmm. typically people end up giving themselves up by continuing on the path. So, well, and there was a lot of suspects too, but they just nobody they couldn't get a they couldn't pin it on one particular one person. person. I mean, it is possible that it was indeed one of those suspects and. They just never had enough evidence against them, like you were saying. So, I don't know. All I know is uh, lesson learned and check all the crevices <laughs> in your home. Crevices. The nooks and crannies. <laughs> crevices. You, 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 the, the verbiage you use. The H- homicides. <laughs> <laughs> it's like dino mate <laughs> homo sides what the hell dude good lord uh, but anyway <laughs> so so thank y'all for listening to this uh episode of the paranormal mind podcast uh if you could we want to leave y'all with this go check out our sponsors alien soda company dot shop they have a whole bunch of cool uh items Coffee mugs. I always say coffee mugs. Right. They got like um, shirts and. Yeah, they have all kinds of stuff. Shower curtains, mouse pads, coffee mugs, shirts are, are, are a big one, of course. Yep. Uh, yeah, check them out. Alien Soda Company dot shop. Yep. Alien Soda Company dot shop. Also, um, go check out our Patreon. Patreon.com yeah, forward slash searchers believe. You can watch the video version of us being stupid, like like normal. And we're very good um, at we're professional. We're very good at that. You'll hear <laughs> you'll hear you'll hear Josh say stuff like homocide and stuff homo-side. like that. Homocide. Um, but go go check that out. And we we give 
a bunch of stuff away all the yeah, time. Yeah, we're getting ready to do a we giveaway gave, for a piece of paranormal equipment. Yeah, Par- Horn Paranormal. Yep. So um, we gave away a trip, all expense paid trip. Um, yeah. So we're going to be there and we gave it away and we're already going what in October. Yeah. So we deliver on it yep. quickly. So again, patreon.com forward slash searchers believe join the searchers family and be a part of that. And you'll have a chance to win. And I mean, the videos seeing us be stupid is priceless, right? Well, or seeing seeing you be stupid well, and say stuff. Well, okay then. All I, right. I wouldn't say that I act stupid. Oh, of course you wouldn't. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. You don't have the sound effect? Yeah, I, I, I figured as much. <laughs> <laughs> you are always prepared, damn it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. And until the next one, searchers out, guys. See you, guys.